Mercantilism. 71 Languages. Seaport at Sunset, a painting by Claude Lorraine, completed in 1639 at the height of mercantilism. Mercantilism is a nationalist economic policy that is designed to maximize the exports and minimize the imports for an economy. In other words, it seeks to maximize the accumulation of resources within the country and use those resources for one-sided trade. The policy aims to reduce a possible current account deficit or reach a current account surplus, and it includes measures aimed at accumulating monetary reserves by a positive balance of trade, especially of finished goods. Historically, such policies might have contributed to war and motivated colonial expansion. 1. Mercantilist theory varies in sophistication from one writer to another and has evolved over time. Mercantilism promotes government regulation of a nation's economy for the purpose of augmenting and bolstering state power at the expense of rival national powers. High tariffs, especially on manufactured goods, were almost universally a feature of mercantilist policy. 2. Before it fell into decline, mercantilism was dominant in modernized parts of Europe and some areas in Africa from the 16th to the 19th centuries, a period of proto-industrialization. 3. Some commentators argue that it is still practiced in the economies of industrializing countries, for, in the form of economic interventionism. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. With the efforts of supranational organizations such as the World Trade Organization to reduce tariffs globally, non-tariff barriers to trade have assumed a greater importance in neo-mercantilism. History, Edit Mercantilism became the dominant school of economic thought in Europe throughout the late Renaissance and the early modern period, from the 15th to the 18th centuries. Evidence of mercantilistic practices appeared in early modern Venice, Genoa, and Pisa regarding control of the Mediterranean trade in bullion. However, the empiricism of the Renaissance, which first began to Quantify large-scale trade accurately, marked mercantilism's birth as a codified school of economic theories. 2. The Italian economist and mercantilist Antonio Serra is considered to have written one of the first treatises on political economy with his 1613 work, A Short Treatise on the Wealth and Poverty of Nations. 10. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Merchants in Venice Mercantilism in its simplest form is bullionism, yet mercantilist writers emphasize the circulation of money and reject hoarding. Their emphasis on monetary metals accords with current, when, ideas regarding the money supply, such as the stimulative effect of a growing money supply. Fiat money and floating exchange rates have since rendered specie concerns irrelevant. In time, industrial policy supplanted the heavy emphasis on money, accompanied by a shift in focus from the capacity to carry on wars to promoting general prosperity. England began the first large-scale and integrative approach to mercantilism during the Elizabethan era. 1558-1603 An early statement on national balance of trade appeared in Discourse of the Commonwealth of this Realm of England, 1549. We must always take heed that we buy no more from strangers than we sell them, for so should we 
impoverish ourselves and enrich them. 11. The period featured various but often disjointed efforts. By the court of Queen Elizabeth, are 1558-1603, to develop a naval and merchant fleet capable of challenging the Spanish stranglehold on trade and of expanding the growth of bullion at home. Queen Elizabeth promoted the Trade and Navigation Acts in Parliament and issued orders to her Navy for the protection and promotion of English shipping. Authors noted most for establishing the English mercantilist system include Gerard de Molins, Fluid. 1585-1641, and Thomas Mann. 1571-1641, who first articulated the Elizabethan system, England's treasure by foreign trade or the balance of foreign trade is the rule of our treasure, which Josiah Child, C1634-31-1643, then developed further. Numerous French authors helped cement French policy around statist mercantilism in the 17th century, as King Louis XIV reigned 1643-1715, followed the guidance of Jean-Baptiste Colbert, his Controller General of Finances from 1665 to 1683 who revised the tariff system and expanded Industrial policy. Colbertism was based on the principle that the state should rule in the economic realm as it did in the diplomatic, and that the interests of the state as identified by the king were superior to those of merchants and of everyone else. Mercantilist economic policies aimed to build up the state, especially in an age of incessant warfare, and theorists charged the state with looking for ways to strengthen the economy and to weaken foreign adversaries. 12. Need quotation to verify. In Europe, academic belief in mercantilism began to fade in the late 18th century after the East. India Company annexed the Mughal Bengal, 13, 14, a major trading nation, and the establishment of the British India through the activities of the East India Company. 15. In light of the arguments of Adam Smith, 1723-1790, and of the classical economists. 16. French economic policy liberalized. Greatly under Napoleon, in power from 1799 to 1814 forward slash 1815. The British Parliament's repeal of the Explore our developer friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Corn laws under Robert Peel in 1846 symbolized the emergence of free trade as an alternative. System. Theory, edit. Most of the European economists who wrote between 1500 and 1750 are today generally. Described as mercantilists, this term was initially used solely by critics, such as Mirabio and Smith, but historians proved quick to adopt it. Originally the standard English term was mercantile. System The word mercantilism came into English from German in the early 19th century. The bulk of what is commonly called mercantilist literature appeared in the 1620s in Great Britain. 17. Smith saw the English merchant Thomas Munn, 1571-1641, as a major creator of the mercantile system, especially in his posthumously published Treasure by Foreign Trade. 1664, which Smith considered the archetype or manifesto of the movement. 18. Perhaps the last major mercantilist work was James Stuart's Principles of Political Economy, published in 1767.
17. Mercantilist literature also extended beyond England. Italy and France produced noted writers of mercantilist themes, including Italy's Giovanni Batro, 1544-1617, and Antonio Serra, 1580, and in France, Jean Bodin and Colbert. Themes also existed in writers from the German historical school from Liszt, as well as followers of the American and British systems of free trade, thus stretching the system into the 19th century. However, many British writers, including Munn and Misselden, were merchants, while many of the writers from other countries were public officials. Beyond mercantilism as a way of understanding the wealth and power of nations, Munn and Misselden are noted for their viewpoints on a wide range of economic matters. 19. The Austrian lawyer and scholar Philipp Wilhelm von Hornig, one of the pioneers of cameralism, detailed a nine-point program of what he deemed effective national economy in his Austria overall. If she only will of 1684, which comprehensively sums up the tenets of mercantilism, 20. That every little bit of a country's soil be utilized for agriculture, mining or manufacturing. That all raw materials found in a country be used in domestic manufacture, since finished goods have a higher value than raw materials. That a large, working population be encouraged. That all exports of gold and silver be prohibited and all domestic money be kept in circulation. That all imports of foreign goods be discouraged as much as possible. That where certain imports are indispensable they be obtained at first hand, in exchange for other domestic goods instead of gold and silver. That as much as possible, imports be confined to raw materials that can be finished, in the home country. That opportunities be constantly sought for selling a country's surplus manufactures to foreigners, so far as necessary, for gold and silver. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF that no importation be allowed if such goods are sufficiently and suitably supplied at home. Other than von Hornig, there were no mercantilist writers presenting an overarching scheme for the ideal economy, as Adam Smith would later do for classical economics. Rather, each mercantilist writer tended to focus on a single area of the economy. 21. Only later did non-mercantilist scholars integrate these diverse ideas into what they called mercantilism. Some scholars thus reject the idea of mercantilism completely, arguing that it gives a false unity to disparate events. Smith saw the mercantile system as an enormous conspiracy by manufacturers and merchants against consumers a view that has led some authors, especially Robert E. Ekelund and Robert D. Tolison, to call mercantilism a rent-seeking society. To a certain extent, mercantilist doctrine itself made a general theory of economics impossible. 22. Mercantilists viewed the economic system as a zero-sum game, in which any gain by one party required a loss by another. 23. Thus, any system of policies that benefited one group would by definition harm the other, and there was no possibility of economics being used to maximize the commonwealth, or common good. 24. Mercantilists' writings were also generally created to rationalize particular practices rather than as investigations into the best policies. 25. Mercantilist domestic policy was more fragmented than its trade policy. While Adam Smith portrayed mercantilism as supportive of strict controls over the economy, 
many mercantilists disagreed. The early modern era was one of letters patent and government-imposed monopolies. Some mercantilists supported these, but others acknowledged the corruption and inefficiency of such systems. Many mercantilists also realized that the inevitable results of quotas and price ceilings were black markets. One notion that mercantilists widely agreed upon was the need for economic oppression of the working population, laborers and farmers were to live at the margins of subsistence. The goal was to maximize production, with no concern for consumption. Extra money Free time and education for the lower classes were seen to inevitably lead to vice and laziness, and would result in harm to the economy. 26. The mercantilists saw a large population as a form of wealth that made possible the development of bigger markets and armies. Opposite to mercantilism was the doctrine of physiocracy, which predicted that mankind would outgrow its resources. The idea of mercantilism was to protect the markets as well as maintain agriculture and those who were dependent upon it. Policies, Edit Mercantilist ideas were the dominant economic ideology of all of Europe in the early modern period. And most states embraced it to a certain degree. Mercantilism was centered on England and France. And it was in these states that mercantilist policies were most often enacted. The policies have included High tariffs, especially on manufactured goods. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. French finance minister. And mercantilist Jean. Baptiste Colbert served for over 20 years, forbidding colonies to trade with other nations, monopolizing markets with staple ports, banning the export of gold and silver, even for payments, forbidding trade to be carried in foreign ships, as per, for example, the Navigation Acts, subsidies on exports, promoting manufacturing and industry through research or direct subsidies, Limiting wages. Maximizing the use of domestic resources. Restricting domestic consumption through non-tariff barriers to trade. France, edit. Main article, Colbertism. Mercantilism arose in France in the early 16th century soon after the monarchy had become the dominant force in French politics. In 1539. An important decree banned the import of woolen goods from Spain and some parts of Flanders. The next year, a number of restrictions were imposed on the export of bullion. 27. Over the rest of the 16th century, further protectionist measures were introduced. The height of French mercantilism is closely associated with Jean-Baptiste Colbert, finance minister for 22 years in the 17th century, to the extent that French mercantilism is sometimes called Colbertism. Under Colbert, the French government became deeply involved in the economy in order to increase exports. Protectionist Policies were enacted that limited imports and favored exports. Industries were organized into guilds and monopolies, and production was regulated by the state through a series of more than 1,000 directives outlining how different products should be produced. 28. To encourage industry, foreign artisans and craftsmen were imported. Colbert also worked to decrease internal barriers to trade reducing internal tariffs and building an extensive network of roads and canals. Colbert's policies were quite successful, and France's industrial output and the 
economy grew considerably during this period, as France became the dominant European power. He was less successful in turning France into a major trading power, and Britain and the Dutch. Republic remained supreme in this field. 28. New France, Edit. Main Article, Economic History of Canada. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. The Anglo-Dutch Wars were fought between the English and the Dutch for control over the seas and trade routes. France imposed its mercantilist philosophy on its colonies in North America, especially New France. It sought to derive the maximum material benefit from the colony, for the homeland, with a minimum of colonial investment in the colony itself. The ideology was embodied in New France through the establishment under royal charter of a number of corporate trading monopolies including La Compagnie des Marchands, which operated from 1613 to 1621, and the Compagnie de Montmorency, from that date until 1627. It was in turn replaced by La Compagnie des Cent. Assises, created in 1627 by King Louis XIII, and the Communaut des Habitants in 1643. These were the first corporations to operate in what is now Canada. United Kingdom, Edit. Main Article Economic History of the United Kingdom The Age of Mercantilism In England, mercantilism reached its peak during the Long Parliament Government, 1640-60. Mercantilist policies were also embraced throughout much of the Tudor and Stuart periods, with Robert Walpole being another major proponent. In Britain, government control over the domestic Economy was far less extensive than on the continent, limited by common law and the steadily increasing power of Parliament. 29. Government-controlled monopolies were common, especially before the English Civil War, but were often controversial. 30. With respect to its colonies, British mercantilism meant that the government and the merchants became partners with the goal of increasing political power and private wealth, to the exclusion of other European powers. The government protected its merchants and kept foreign ones out through trade barriers, regulations, and subsidies to domestic industries in order to maximize exports from and Minimize imports to the realm. The government had to fight. Smuggling, which became a favorite American technique. In the 18th century to circumvent the restrictions on trading. With the French, Spanish, or Dutch. The goal of mercantilism was to run trade surpluses to benefit. The government. The government took its share through duties and taxes with the remainder going to merchants in Britain. The government spent much of its revenue on the Royal Navy, which both protected the colonies of Britain but was vital in capturing the colonies of other European powers. 31, 32 British mercantilist writers were themselves divided on whether domestic controls were necessary. British mercantilism thus mainly took the form of efforts to control trade. A wide array of regulations were put in place to encourage exports and discourage imports. Tariffs were placed on imports and bounties given for exports, and the export of some raw materials was banned completely. The Navigation Acts removed foreign merchants from being involved in England's domestic trade. British Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Mercantilism helped create trade. 
patterns such as the triangular trade in the North Atlantic, in which raw materials were imported to the mother country and then processed and redistributed to other colonies. Policies in their American colonies led to friction with the inhabitants of the 13 colonies, and mercantilist policies, such as forbidding trade with other European powers and enforcing bans on smuggling, were a major irritant leading to the American Revolution. 32, 33 Mercantilism taught that trade was a zero-sum game, with one country's gain equivalent to a loss sustained by the trading partner. Overall, however, mercantilist policies had a positive impact on Britain, helping to transform the nation into the world's dominant trading power and a global hegemon. 33. One domestic policy that had a lasting impact was the conversion of wastelands to agricultural use. Mercantilists believed that to maximize a nation's power, all land and resources had to be used to their highest and best use, and this era thus saw projects like the draining of the fens. 34. Other countries, edit. The other nations of Europe also embraced mercantilism. To varying degrees. The Netherlands, which had become the financial center of Europe by being its most efficient trader, had little interest in seeing trade restricted and adopted few mercantilist policies. Mercantilism became prominent in Central Europe and Scandinavia after the Thirty Years' War, 1618-48, with Christina of Sweden, Jacob Kettler of Courland, and Christian IV of Denmark, being notable proponents. The Habsburg Holy Roman Emperors had long been interested in mercantilist policies, but the vast and decentralized nature of their empire made implementing such notions difficult. Some constituent states of the empire did embrace mercantilism, most notably Prussia, which under Frederick the Great had perhaps the most rigidly controlled economy in Europe. Spain benefited from mercantilism early on as it brought a large amount of precious metals such as gold and silver into their treasury by way of the New World. In the long run, Spain's economy collapsed as it was unable to adjust to the inflation that came with the large influx of bullion. Heavy intervention from the Crown put crippling laws for the protection of Spanish goods and services. Mercantilist protectionist policy in Spain caused the long-run failure of the Castilian textile industry. As the efficiency severely dropped off with each passing year due to the production being held at a specific level. Spain's heavily protected industries led to famines as much of its agricultural land was required to be used for sheep instead of grain. Much of their grain was imported from the Baltic region of Europe which caused a shortage of food in the inner regions of Spain. Spain limiting the Explore our developer friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Trade of their colonies is one of the causes that led to the separation of the Dutch from the Spanish Empire. The culmination of all of these policies led to Spain defaulting in 1557, 1575, and 1596. 35. During the economic collapse of the 17th century, Spain had little coherent economic policy, but French mercantilist policies were imported by Philip V with some success. Ottoman Grand Vizier Kemankis Kara Mustafa Pasha also followed some mercantilist financial policies during the reign of Ibrahim I. Russia under Peter I. Peter the Great, attempted to pursue mercantilism, but had little 
success because of Russia's lack of a large merchant class or an industrial base. Wars and Imperialism, Edit Mercantilism was the economic version of warfare using economics as a tool for warfare by other means backed up by the state apparatus and was well suited to an era of military warfare. 36. Since the level of world trade was viewed as fixed, it followed that the only way to increase a nation's trade was to take it from another. A number of wars, most notably the Anglo-Dutch Wars and the Franco-Dutch Wars, can be linked directly to mercantilist theories. Most wars had other causes but they reinforced mercantilism by clearly defining the enemy and justified damage to the enemy's economy. Mercantilism fueled the imperialism of this era, as many nations expended significant effort to conquer new colonies that would be sources of gold, as in Mexico, or sugar, as in the West Indies, as well as becoming exclusive markets. European power spread around the globe, often under the aegis of companies with government-guaranteed monopolies in certain defined geographical regions, such as the Dutch East India Company or the Hudson's Bay Company, operating in present-day Canada. With the establishment of overseas colonies by European powers early in the 17th century, Mercantile theory gained a new and wider significance, in which its aim and ideal became both national and imperialistic. 37. Need quotation to verify. The connection between communism and mercantilism has been explored by Marxist economist and sociologist Giovanni Arai, who analyzed mercantilism as having three components, settler, colonialism, capitalist slavery, and economic nationalism and further noted that slavery was partly a condition and partly a result of the success of settler colonialism. 38. In France, the triangular trade method was integral in the continuation of mercantilism throughout the 17th and 18th centuries. 39. In order to maximize exports and minimize imports, France worked on a strict Atlantic route, France, to Africa, to the Americas and then back to France. 38. By bringing African slaves to labor in the New World, their labor value increased, and France capitalized upon the market resources produced by slave labor. 39. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Mercantilism as a weapon has continued to be used by nations through the 21st century by way of modern tariffs as it puts smaller economies in a position to conform to the larger economy's goals or risk economic ruin due to an imbalance in trade. Trade wars are often dependent on such tariffs and restrictions hurting the opposing economy. Origins, Edit The term mercantile system was used by its foremost critic, Adam Smith, 40, but Mirabio, 1715, 1789, had used mercantilism earlier. Mercantilism functioned as the economic counterpart of the older version of political power, divine right of kings and absolute monarchy. 41. Scholars debate over why mercantilism dominated economic ideology for 250 years. 42. One group, represented by Jacob Viner, sees mercantilism as simply a straightforward, common-sense system whose logical fallacies remained opaque to people at the time, as they simply lacked the required analytical tools. The second school, supported by scholars such as Robert B. Ekelund, portrays mercantilism not as a mistake, but rather as the best possible system for those who developed it. This school argues 
that rent-seeking merchants and governments developed and enforced mercantilist policies. Merchants benefited greatly from the enforced monopolies, bans on foreign competition, and poverty of the workers. Governments benefited from the high tariffs and payments from the merchants. Whereas later economic ideas were often developed by academics and philosophers. Almost all mercantilist writers were merchants or government officials. 43. Monetarism offers a third explanation for mercantilism. European trade exported bullion to pay for goods from Asia, thus reducing the money supply and putting downward pressure on prices and economic activity. The evidence for this hypothesis is the lack of inflation in the British economy. Until the Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars, when paper money came into vogue. A fourth explanation lies in the increasing professionalization and technification of the wars of the era, which turned the maintenance of adequate reserve funds, in the prospect of war, into a more and more expensive and eventually competitive business. Mercantilism developed at a time of transition for the European economy. Isolated feudal estates were being replaced by centralized nation-states as the focus of power. Technological changes in shipping and the growth of urban centers led to a rapid increase in international trade. 44. Mercantilism focused on how this trade could best aid the states. Another important change was the introduction of double-entry bookkeeping and modern accounting. This accounting made extremely clear the inflow and outflow of trade, contributing to the close scrutiny given to the balance of trade. 45. New markets and new mines propelled foreign trade to previously inconceivable volumes. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF resulting in the great upward movement in prices and an increase in the volume of merchant activity itself. 46. Prior to mercantilism, the most important economic work done in Europe was by the medieval scholastic theorists. The goal of these thinkers was to find an economic system compatible with Christian doctrines of piety and justice. They focused mainly on microeconomics and on local exchanges between individuals. Mercantilism was closely aligned with the other theories and ideas that began to replace the medieval worldview. This period saw the adoption of the very Machiavellian realpolitik and the primacy of the raison d'etat in international relations. The Mercantilist idea of all trade as a zero-sum game, in which each side was trying to best the other in a ruthless competition, was integrated into the works of Thomas Hobbes. This dark view of human nature also fit well with the Puritan view of the world, and some of the most stridently mercantilist legislation, such as the Navigation Ordinance of 1651 was enacted by the government of Oliver Cromwell. 47. Jean-Baptiste Colbert's work in 17th century France came to exemplify classical mercantilism. In the English-speaking world, its ideas were criticized by Adam Smith with the publication of the Wealth of Nations in 1776 and later by David Ricardo with his explanation of comparative advantage. Mercantilism was rejected by Britain and France by the mid-19th century. The British Empire embraced free trade and used its power as the financial center of the world to promote the same. The Guyanese historian Walter Rodney describes mercantilism as the period of the worldwide development of European commerce, which began in the 15th century with the voyages 
of Portuguese and Spanish explorers to Africa, Asia, and the New World. End of Mercantilism, Edit Adam Smith, David Hume, Edward Gibbon, Voltaire and Jean-Jacques Rousseau were the founding fathers of anti-mercantilist thought. A number of scholars found important flaws with mercantilism long before Smith developed an ideology that could fully replace it. Critics like Hume, Dudley North and John Locke undermined much of mercantilism and it steadily lost favor during the 18th century. In 1690, Locke argued that prices vary in proportion to the quantity of money. Locke's second treatise also points towards the heart of the anti-mercantilist critique, that the wealth of the world is not fixed, but is created by human labor, represented embryonically by Locke's labor theory of value. Mercantilists failed to understand the notions of absolute advantage and comparative advantage, although this idea was only fully fleshed out in 1817 by David Ricardo, and the benefits of trade. 48, Note 1 Hume famously noted the impossibility of the mercantilist's goal of a constant positive balance of trade. 49 as bullion flowed into one country, the supply would increase, and the value of bullion in Explore Our Developer Friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Much of Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations is an attack on mercantilism. That state would steadily decline relative to other goods. Conversely, in the state exporting bullion, its value would slowly rise. Eventually, it would no longer be cost-effective to export goods from the high price country to the low price country, and the balance of trade would reverse. Mercantilists fundamentally misunderstood this, long arguing that an increase in the money supply simply meant that everyone gets richer. 50. The importance placed on bullion was also a central target, even if many mercantilists had themselves begun to de-emphasize the importance of gold and silver. Adam Smith noted that at the core of the mercantile system was the popular folly of confusing wealth with money, that bullion was just the same as any other commodity, and that there was no reason to give it special treatment. 17. More recently, scholars have discounted the accuracy of this critique. They believe Munn and Misselden were not making this mistake in the 1620s, and point to their followers Josia Child and Charles Davenant, who in 1699 wrote, Gold and silver are indeed the measures of trade but that the spring and original of it, in all nations is the natural or artificial product of the country, that is to say, what this land or what this labor and industry produces. 51. The critique that mercantilism was a form of rent-seeking has also seen criticism, as scholars such as Jacob Viner in the 1930s pointed out that merchant mercantilists such as Munn understood that they would not gain by higher prices for English wares abroad. 52. The first school to completely reject mercantilism was the physiocrats, who developed their theories in France. Their theories also had several important problems, and the replacement of mercantilism did not come until Adam Smith published The Wealth of Nations in 1776. This book outlines the basics of what is today known as classical economics. Smith spent a considerable portion of the book rebutting the arguments of the mercantilists, though often these are simplified or exaggerated. Versions of Mercantilist Thought 43 
scholars are also divided over the cause of mercantilism's end. Those who believe the theory was simply an error hold that its replacement was inevitable as soon as Smith's more accurate ideas were unveiled. Those who feel that mercantilism amounted to rent-seeking hold that it ended only when major power shifts occurred. In Britain, mercantilism faded as the Parliament gained the monarch's power to grant monopolies, while the wealthy capitalists who controlled the House of Commons benefited from these monopolies, Parliament found it difficult to implement them because of the high cost of group decision-making. 53. Mercantilist regulations were steadily removed over the course of the 18th century in Britain, and during the 19th century, the British government fully embraced free trade and Smith's laissez-faire economics. On the continent, the process was somewhat different. In France, economic control Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF remained in the hands of the royal family, and mercantilism continued until the French Revolution. In Germany, mercantilism remained an important ideology in the 19th and early 20th centuries, when the historical school of economics was paramount. 54. Legacy, Edit Adam Smith criticized the mercantile doctrine that prioritized production in the economy, he maintained that consumption was of prime significance. Additionally, the mercantile system was well liked by the traders as it was what is now referred to as rent-seeking. 55. John Maynard Keynes affirmed that motivating the production process was as significant as encouraging consumption, which benefited the new mercantilism. Keynes also affirmed that in the post-classical period the primary focus on gold and silver supplies, bullion, was rational. During the era before paper money, an increase in gold and silver was one of the ways of mercantilism increasing an economy's reserve or the supply of money. Keynes reiterated that the doctrines advocated for by mercantilism aided the improvement of both the domestic and foreign outlay, domestic because the policies lowered the domestic rate of interest and investment by foreigners by tending to create a favorable balance of trade. 56. Keynes and other economists of the 20th century also realized that the balance of payments is an important concern. Keynes also supported government intervention in the economy as necessary, as did mercantilism. 57. As of 2010, the word mercantilism remains a pejorative term, often used to attack various forms of protectionism. 58. The similarities between Keynesianism, and its successor ideas, and mercantilism have sometimes led critics, who, to call them neo-mercantilism. Paul Samuelson, writing within a Keynesian framework, wrote of mercantilism, with employment less than full and net national product suboptimal, all the debunked mercantilist arguments turn out to be valid. 59. Some other systems that copy several mercantilist policies, such as Japan's economic system, are also sometimes called neo-mercantilist. 60. In an essay appearing in the 14 May 2007 issue of Newsweek, business columnist Robert J. Samuelson wrote that China was pursuing an essentially neo-mercantilist trade policy that threatened to undermine the post-World War II international economic structure. 4. Murray Rothbard, representing the Austrian School of Economics, describes it this way. Mercantilism, which reached its height in the Europe of the 17th and 18th centuries, 
was a system of statism which employed economic fallacy to build up a structure of imperial state power, as well as special subsidy and monopolistic privilege to individuals or groups favored by the state. Thus, mercantilism held exports should be encouraged by the government and imports discouraged. 61. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Rothbard viewed mercantilism not as a coherent economic theory but rather a series of post hoc rationalizations for various economic policies by interested parties. In specific instances, protectionist mercantilist policies also had an important and positive impact on the state that enacted them. Adam Smith, for instance, praised the Navigation Acts, as they greatly expanded the British merchant fleet and played a central role in turning Britain into the world's naval and economic superpower from the 18th century onward. 62. Some economists thus feel that protecting infant industries, while causing short-term harm, can be beneficial in the long term. See also, Edit. Autarchy. British Empire. Money free market. Neorealism, international relations. Crony capitalism. Notes, edit. 1 carat for instance, imagine that Portugal was a more efficient producer of wine than England, yet in England, cloth could be produced more efficiently than it could in Portugal. Thus if Portugal specialized in wine and England in cloth, both states would end up better off if they traded. This is an example of the reciprocal benefits of trade, whether due to comparative or absolute advantage. In modern economic theory, trade is not a zero-sum game of cutthroat competition, because both sides can benefit from it. References, Edit 1. Carrot Johnson et al. History of the Domestic and Foreign Commerce of the United States p. 37. 2. Carrot A. B. John J. McCusker, Mercantilism and the Economic History of the Early Modern Atlantic World. Cambridge Up, 2001. 3. Carrot Mercantilism Laura La Hay The Concise Encyclopedia of Economics, 2008. 4 carat A. B. Samuelson 2007. 5 carat Canopy Admin, the 15th of February 2017. Mercantilism, a lesson for our times. Murray N. Rothbard. Mises. Institute. Retrieved the 11th of September 2018. 6 carat Macroeconomic Effects of Chinese Mercantilism. The 31st of December, 2009. 7 Carat Martina, Michael, the 16th of March, 2017. U.S. Tech Group urges global action against Chinese. Mercantilism. Reuters via www.reuters.com. 8 Carat Fam, Peter. Why do all roads lead to China? Forbes. 9 Carat Learning from Chinese Mercantilism PIIE The 2nd of March, 2016 10 Carat Friedrich List, 1916 The National System of Political Economy A.M. Kelly P265 11 Carat Now Attributed to Sir Thomas Smith, Quoted in Braudel 1979, p. 204. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. 12 carat Jerome Bloom et al. The European World, A History, 1970, p. 279. 13 carat George Arillo, Turthan Carroy, 2009. How India Clothed the World, 
the world of South Asian textiles, 151850. Brill Publishers. P174. ISBN 978-90-474-2997-5 14 Karat Abeku Ma Singh, 2006 Modern World System and Indian Proto-Industrialization, Bengal 1650 1800, Volume 1 Northern Book Center ISBN 978-81-7211-201-1 15 Karat Sanjay Subramaniam, 1998 Money and the Market in India, 1100-1700 Oxford University Press ISBN 978-0-521-25758-9 16 Carat Humphrey, Thomas M. Insights from Doctrinal History Mercantilists Classicals, PDF Richmond Federal Reserve Retrieved 14 June, 2018 the Mercantilism of John Law and Sir James Stuart Gave way to the Classicism of David Hume and David Ricardo. Dot. 17 Carat ABC Magnuson 2003, p 46. 18 Carat Magnuson 2003, p 47. According to Adam Smith, the main architect of the mercantile system of Economic thinking was the English writer and tradesman Thomas Mann, 1571-1641. His main published writings appear in two short treatises, A Discourse of Trade from England unto the East, Indies, 1621, and perhaps the more important England's treasure by foreign trade. 1664. Adam Smith picked out this last tract published posthumously after Munn's death, but probably written during the late 1620s as the archetype of mercantilist texts, its manifesto. 19 Carat Magnuson 2003, p. 50. 20 Carat Ekelund and Heber 1997, pp. 4041. 21 Carat Landreth and Cullender 2002, p. 44. 22 Carat Ekelund and Tolison 1981, p. 154. 23 Carat Ekelund and Tolison 1981, p. 9. 24 Carat Landreth and Cullender 2002, p. 48. 25 Carat Lands 1997, p. 31. 26 Carat Ekelund and Heber 1975, p. 46. 27 Carat Kellen Benz 1976, p. 29. 28 Carat A. B. Williams 1999 pp. 177183. 29 Carat Hansen 2001, p. 65. 30 Carat Hill 1980, p. 32. 31 Carat Nesta 2000, p. 54. 32 Carat A. B. Max Saville, Seeds of Liberty, The Genesis of the American Mind, 1948, pp. 204 FF 33 Carat A. B. Fryden, Jeffrey Dot, Lake, David O. 2014 International Political Economy, Perspectives on Global Power and Wealth, 4th ed. Routledge pp. 128FF ISBN 978-1-134-59595-2 34 Carat Wilson 1963, p. 15 35 Carat Rothbard, Murray, 
2010. Mercantilism in Spain. Mises Institute. 36 Carat Spiegel 1991, pp. 93118. 37 Carat Emma E. Richard Johnson, et al. 1915. History of Domestic and Foreign Commerce of the United States. Carnegie Institution of Washington. pp. 35-37. 38-carat A. B. Miller, CL 2008. Introduction. P14 in the French Atlantic Triangle, Literature and Culture of the Slave Trade. Duke University Press. 39-carat A. B. Miller, CL 2008. Introduction. pp. 139 in the French Atlantic Triangle, Literature and Culture of the Slave Trade. Duke University Press. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. 40 Carat Gorsi, Perry, 2011. Regulating the British Economy, 1660-1850. Farnham, Ashgit Pub. P83. ISBN 978-0-7546-9762-6. 41-carat mercantilism, definition and examples. Encyclopedia Britannica. The 22nd of August, 2023. 42 Carat Ekelund and Heber 1975, p61. 43 Carat A. B. Nehans 1990, p19. 44 Carat Landreth and Cullender 2002, p43. 45 Carat Wilson 1963, p10. 46 Carat Galbraith 1987, pp. 33-34. 47 Carat Landreth and Cullender 2002, p. 53. 48 Carat Spiegel 1991, Chapter 8. 49 Carat Dutter, Polonath, 2010. International Business Management Text Cases. Excel Books. ISBN 978 81-7446-867-3 50 Carat Ekelund and Heber 1975, p43 51 Carat Referenced to Davenant, 1771, 1699, p171 in Magnuson 2003, p53. 52 Carat Magnuson 2003, p54. 53 Carat Ekelund and Tolison 1981. 54 Carat Wilson 1963, p6. 55 Carat Breezes 2003, Volume 2, p484. 56 Carat Harris 1950, p 321. 57 Carat C. Markwell 2006. 58 Carat Wilson 1963, p 3. 59 Carat Samuelson 1964. 60 Carat Walters and Blake 1976. 61 Carat Rothbard 1997. P43. 62 Carat Hansen 2001. P64. Further reading, edit. Ames, Glenn J. 1996. Colbert, Mercantilism and the French Quest for the Asian Trade. Braudel, Fernand. 1979. The Wheels of Commerce, Civilization and Capitalism 15th 18th. Century. Breezes, Elise S. 2003, Mercantilism, 
The Oxford Encyclopedia of Economic History, Oxford. University Press. Mercantilism, Encyclopedia Britannica, Oxford University Press, 2014. Ekelund, Robert B. Heber, Robert F. 1975, A History of Economic Theory and Method. New York, McGraw-Hill, ISBN 978-0-07-019143-3. Ekelund, Robert B. Jr., Heber, Robert F. 1997, A History of Economic Theory and Method. 4th ed. Long Grove IL, Waveland Press, ISBN 978-1-577666-381-2. Ekelund, Robert B. Tolison, Robert D. 1981, Mercantilism as a Rent-Seeking Society. Economic Regulation in Historical Perspective, College Station, Texas A&M University Press. ISBN 978-0-89096-120-9 Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF Galbraith, John Kenneth, 1987, Economics in Perspective, A Critical History, Boston Houghton Mifflin ISBN 978-0-395-35572-5 Grant, R. George, 2009, Tackling the Poverty of Nations, Why So Many Are Poor and What We Can Do About It, Xlibri, ISBN 978-1-4363-3 Hansen, E. Damsgaard, 2001, European Economic History, From Mercantilism to Maastricht. And Beyond, 1st ed., Copenhagen Business School Press, ISBN 978-87-630-0017-8. Harris, Seymour E. 1950, New Economics, Keynes' Influence on Theory and Public Policy. Heckscher, Eli F. 1936, Revisions in Economic History, v. Mercantilism. Economic History. Review, 7 1 1936, pp. 4454. Online. Heckscher, Eli F. 1935, Mercantilism, London, Allen and Dunwin. Hill, Christopher. 1980, 1961, The Century of Revolution, 1603-1714, 2nd ed., Nelson. ISBN 978-0-17-712002-2. Johnson, Harkey G. March, 1974, Mercantilism, Past, Present and Future. The Manchester School, 42, 117, do, 10.1111 forward slash j.1467-9999, tb 00098x Kellen Benz, Herman, 1976, The Rise of the European Economy. An Economic History of Continental Europe from the 15th to the 18th Century, New York, Holmes and Meyer. Publishers Keynes, John Minard, 1936, Notes on Mercantilism, The Usury Laws, Stamped Money and The Theories of Underconsumption, The General Theory of Employment, Interest, and Money, London. Palgrave Macmillan, archived from the original on 19 December 2008. Lahey, Laura, 2008. Mercantilism. In Henderson, David R. E.D. The Concise. Encyclopedia of Economics. 
Indianapolis, in, Liberty Fund, Inc. pp. 34343. ISBN 978-0-86597-666-5. Lance, David S. 1997, The Unbound Prometheus, Technological Change and Industrial. Development in Western Europe from 1750 to the present, Cambridge, Cambridge University. Press, ISBN 978-0-521-09418-4. Landreth, Harry, Cullender, David C. 2002, History of Economic Thought, 4th ed., Boston. Houghton Mifflin. ISBN 978-0-618-13394-9. Letwin, William, 2003, 1963, The Origins of Scientific Economics, English Economic Thought. 1661776, London, Routledge. ISBN 978-0-415-31329-2. Magnuson, Lars G. 2003, Mercantilism, in Samuels, Warren J. Biddle, Jeff E. Davis, John. B. EDS, A Companion to the History of Economic Thought, Malden, Ma, Blackwell Publishing. ISBN 978-0-631-22573-7. Markwell, Donald, 2006, John Maynard Keynes and International Relations, Economic Paths to War and Peace, Oxford and New York, Oxford University Press, ISBN 978-0-19-829236-1. Nestor, R. 2000, The Great Frontier War, Britain, France, and the Imperial Struggle for North America, 1607-1755, Prega, ISBN 978-0-275-96772-7. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Nihans, Jorg, 1990, A History of Economic Theory, Classic Contributions, 1720-1980. Baltimore, MD, Johns Hopkins University Press. ISBN 978-0-8018-3834-7. Omrund, David, 2003, The Rise of Commercial Empires, England and the Netherlands in the Age of Mercantilism, 1651-770. Rees, J.F. Mercantilism History 24-94, 1939, pp. 1-2-9-1-3-5 online, Historiography. Rothbard, Murray, 1997, Mercantilism, A Lesson for Our Times. Cheltenham, England. Edward Elgar. Samuelson, Paul, May, 1964, Theoretical Notes on Trade Problems. The Review of Economics and Statistics, 46, 2145154, do, 10.2307 forward slash 1928178, just a 1928178, S2SID 15414979292, Samuelson, Robert J. The 17th of May, 2007. China's Wrong Turn on Trade, Newsweek, Retrieved. The 6th of December, 2007. Smith, George H. 2008. Mercantilism. In Hamoe, Ronald, ed. The Encyclopedia of Libertarianism. Thousand Oaks, C.A., Sage, K. 
Kato Institute. pp. 326328. Do 10.4135/9781412965811.n198. ISBN 978-1-4129-6580-4 OCLC 75083124 Spiegel, Henry William, 1991, The Growth of Economic Thought, 3rd Duke University Press ISBN 978-0-8223-0973-4 Vagai, Gianni, Groenugen, Peter, 2003, A Concise History of Economic Thought, From Mercantilism to Monetarism, New York, Palgrave Macmillan ISBN 978-0-333-99936-3 Walters, Robert S. Dot, Blake, David H. 1976, The Politics of Global Economic Relations. Inglewood Cliffs, N.J., Prentice Hall, ISBN 978-0-13-684712-2 Williams, E.N. 1999, The Ancien Regime in Europe, Government and Society in the Major. States 1648-1789, London, Pimlico, ISBN 978-7126-5934-5. Wilson, Charles. 1963-1958, Mercantilism, London, Routledge and Kagan Paul, ISBN Missing. External links, edit. Thomas Munn's England's Treasure by Foreign Trade. An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations at Project Gutenberg, Adam. Smith's Wealth of Nations. Categories, Mercantilism Economic Policy. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF.